experience been in Buffalo so far? You've been, you've been in town long? You know, this is my first trip to Buffalo, Mike. So far, it's been fantastic. Great architecture, fantastic food here, and best of all, all really warm and welcoming people. Yeah, absolutely. We are known for our food, that's that's for sure. Absolutely. And what's it like to be at an event like this where a chapter is celebrating uh, such a, a big milestone? You know, the profession is changing very rapidly, but even though the profession is changing very quickly, a is a constant. So this is a reminder that Paris has been here for 50 years, will be here for 50 more years, and with all the things changing, now's the time to be a member of Paris Hey. And uh, in the grand scheme of things, I'm not sure how the other, how long the other chapters have been along. How, where does Buffalo Niagara rank in, in terms of uh, uh, membership? Uh, in terms of membership, you're one of our largest mid-sized chapters, just about 200 people. You've had a good year. I think membership's been up about 7%. And your membership committee has been doing great things. We're really happy to see the results. And how about nationally as well? How, do, how is the, uh, the organization doing membership-wise? Well, nationally we're doing well. Not as well as Buffalo. We're working to catch up with Buffalo. By the end of the year, membership will be up somewhere between 3% and 5%. Which for us, at a national level, it's going to be a record year. Excellent, excellent. Any, any, any trends nationally that within the organization or without it that may affect uh, how folks do business here uh, in the Buffalo Niagara chapter? You know, we're looking at our accreditation program. Um, we're taking a look at the APR. We just posted a report today on our website about some options to strengthen the APR program. So if you're interested in credentialing, if you think you might want to get credentialed, if you are an APR, take a look at our website. We're going to have a two-month consultation period, in, and that could affect the profession in a lot of different ways. Excellent, excellent. And uh, just back to the to the 50-year anniversary again, uh, uh, where does that rank with other uh, chapters as far as longevity uh, as members of the, of the organization? You know, you're one of our oldest. BRSA has only been around just over 60 years, six in a row. So uh, having a 50-year anniversary puts Buffalo right up there at the top. So Buffalo and Agra, you're one of our oldest and certainly one of our best. That's good to hear. That's good to hear. And uh, Bill, anything else you wanted to say about the event, the, uh, the region, or the, the national organization that maybe I didn't ask you? You know, it's great to be here in Buffalo. We've got great people, great leaders, great volunteers, great history. I'm just happy that you invited me up to be part of this bike, so thank you. Excellent. Please welcome, very privileged to have with us, President and COO of PRSA, Bill Murray. You know, I don't know where you got that stuff, John, but I like it. You can pass it over to my office and I'm going to use it again. That's really good stuff. Well, I got the invitation to come up here to help you guys celebrate your 50th. And my first thought was 50 years. That's absolutely incredible. And then I started doing my homework. And then I started doing my homework. And I see that your chapter started in 1963. And then I looked at my own birthday. <laughs> and I was born in 1960, and I thought, that 50 years isn't that much. <laughs> and, well, I can delude myself about being 53, 54 this year. But 50 years of this chapter is spectacular. Paris A is a labor of love. If you have volunteered for this chapter ever, raise your hand. Raise your hand. Look at this room. Look at this. Look at this. Look at all the people who have made this happen. Yeah. This is really spectacular. It is emblematic of what we are as a community. So I want to thank all of you guys for your contribution, for the work that you've done, to make it possible for me to have my job down in New York. I like to run a large, complicated, not for profit organizations, and you guys make it possible for all of you. PR is a complicated profession, and PR is a complicated organization. John said something about the future. Once we speak about the future, I have no idea what the future is bringing. But I can tell you a couple things. First of all, the national organization is very, very strong. We got through the recession, we put money in the bank, we have about $4 million in reserves of all time high. We're a $12 million organization. We're over across the country this year. Membership will be up between 3% and 5%. We are doing well. We are well placed for the future. So whatever you're doing up here in Buffalo, that hurts working well, and we're going to be down in New York to support you and to take you into the future. So the question, of course, is what that future looks like. What does it look like for the profession? Interestingly, everywhere I go in the country, I get the same question. What does the future of PR look like? And there are reasons I get that question. Because this is a very interesting, very turbulent time to be in the profession. 
So what do I see as I look out across the profession? I see changes being driven by technology. And that's fairly obvious. But what does it mean? It means change is going to be constant then. It's no longer about Facebook or business. It's about the next thing that comes along, the next thing that comes along. So you need to be adaptive. You need to keep those fundamental communication skills you have with, but you need to be able to identify new technologies and embrace them and use them. What else is happening? Well, technology is making this profession more quantitative, measurement, return on investment. This is partly a reflection of the recession. Our clients, our companies, they want to know what they're paying for their dollar. But now we have new tools. I'm going to date myself off. I remember when faxes were new. You put that fax on the machine, you push the button, but you have no idea what's happening on the other end. Is that fax coming out of the machine and going right to the garbage can on the other end, or is somebody reading it? Now we send out an email, and we do this appearance at hey. We know if you opened it, when you opened it, what you did when you opened it, if you went to our website, where you went to our website, if you walked into our shopping cart. We're going to be asking increasingly for metrics. That's just going to keep happening as the technology gives us more opportunity to use metrics. The last thing I see happening is a convergence of the disciplines. It was very interesting to hear what the titles of all the people in this chapter are, how many have marketed me. What's happening is the communication disciplines are being pushed together. Advertising, marketing, and public relations. Why do I tell you this? It's not just a look at the titles of our database. I look at our awards program. We're the entities growing most quickly, integrated communications. One of my agency friends up in New York, every campaign that they are delivering for a big customer is an integrated communications campaign. I look at our job postings on our rolling board. What do the listings look like? These listings have position descriptions that talk about different attributes of communication things. Marketing, integrated communication things. This is where undoubtedly our future is, moving in the future. Now, one of them that's a little scared me. You know, we're not marketing people, we're not advertising people, we're PR people at our hearts. But I think the good news is that we are companies better than the other disciplines to take this future, take advantage of it, and realize its potential. I think about public relations as a 360 degree discipline. I think about marketing as focused on the customer. I think about advertising as focused on the customer. But when you're in people, you're focused on everybody. You're focused on community relations, investor relations, internal communications. You're focused 360 degrees around your organization. So the futures out there are we're being pushed into it, we're being pushed by technology. We're going to have to be more quantitative. We're going to have to get closer to our ally communication disciplines. But I think we're not just going to survive, we're going to thrive. Because as we are people, we have that 360 degree perspective that we've been doing this for a long time. And I think we're going to be here for at least another 50 years. So thanks for having me tonight. I really appreciate it. Thank you.